Now we're going to go over to a simple little part called a double flipper. Uh, and this could be just something that uh, mixes paint or it might be some little assembly device that actually grabs a little uh, component off the assembly line and shoves it over to a little channel and uh, routes it down to an assembly position. But we're going to build a mold for it. And as you can see, there's a hole going through the center that's got a, a fluted type uh, uh, shaft to it to get uh, drive action into it and uh, a couple of, of clearance holes on both ends of it and those are going to be accommodated into the actual mold wizard definition. Now as we are going to build a mold obviously the first thing you do is any kind of a mold maker tool maker whatever is double check the product and that design of the product sometimes needs to be kicked back to the engineer designer because they don't quite think of everything from the mold side of things they are functionally relevant uh, in, in their terms of thinking. Now as I said, the gateway application is what I'm in currently, and if I go to my file drop down here and just show you my assembly license is not on, but yet I am in the mold wizard application, and that is found in the all applications underneath the process specific. So there you can see the check mark next to mold wizard, but without ma uh, modeling or the uh, assemblies application. Now the mold wizard tab that appears on the ribbon bar there has the complete array of all of the functionality from left to right. It does generally follow that kind of a process. You start on the left and kind of work your way to the right. You don't have to use everything in order. You can jump back and forth a little bit if you want to, but it does suggest a nice orderly way and, and people like it that way from our experience. Now, as you uh, want to look at this part and consider molding it, it uh, the, the product for Mold Wizard does, does have a lot of tools. The mold validation for the design, called mold design validation, includes the abilities to turn on certain checker options as to what kind of a part you're actually looking for, what kind of quality. This could be predefined and configured for the kind of criteria that you might be looking for, whether that be might be customer based or whether it is based on the kind of parts that you want to build and the kind of flaws that you want to try and avoid. Notice down here on the bottom, this little option here, always save results in part. That's a nice little option to turn on. When you turn that on and, and then go ahead and choose whatever options you want as your checker, then whatever data that generates will be saved within the, the file that you are building here, your mold assembly. And that's going to make things run a little bit faster, a little bit better for you, because rather than having to go access some kind of a settings file or another log file or other data that's saved outside of this, it will be internal to the part. So that's a good thing to do. Now, in the consideration of more analysis, you can check the regions of that actual part. And the check regions command is actually in the, uh, the process a couple of times. The first place that is in is in the validation. And those are the things you want to look for right away that might uh, be the criteria that kind of kicks that part back to the engineer to say, hey, we need some draft on this, or we can't do this with a, a single two-pull mold. We've got to have some kind of a side pull or something like that. I want to calculate with that one easy click. It is internally looking for all the draft relative to a normal vector direction, which it implied based on the orientation of the part and the WCS. Now I can go into these various tabs here and start looking at actual face characteristics, such as any vertical faces. As I choose that option right there, it will highlight faces that are parallel, or at least have a linear element to them that is parallel to the draw direction. And if I want to address that with my designer, then I can either get him on the phone, uh, do a little go-to session with him and kind of review these things. Or maybe I, I need to just go ahead and, and mold this part with straight walls like that. It might be part of the functional uh, requirements of this part. Other things I can look for might include positive angles or negative angles. And the negative angle, just based on an input value here, three degrees as a default, you can change that to whatever you want, but it can show you, for instance, the slots or keyway we've got for our drive shaft. Those have a little bit of draft on it, but we know immediately that it's less than three degrees because of how it highlights when I choose that particular option. There are also things that they identify as crossover faces or faces that it can't necessarily infer as part of a cavity side or a core side. And that's where we get into regions. Regions are basically your cavity of core or any kind of side pull or other kind of motion uh, as opposed to a fixed part of the mold. When we're dealing with the uh, cavity region, then it will take its best guess, so to speak, of the uh, inferred 
angularity or slope of the faces, and then it will start highlighting edges between the faces where it can uh, identify as a, a suggested parting plane. Now, if I have this cavity region selected here, and I'm looking at all the highlighting here, I've got an option to set the region color, and it's going to colorize the faces based on these settings, and I see with the uh, the the itemized numbering of faces on my cavity region, it has found 63 particular faces that it will designate with this orangish color. Tw uh, 56 colors in a darker bluer color, and 10, it just doesn't know because they're straight or they're vertical, and it confirms that there is a crossover vertical face. If I highlight that, then it highlights those faces for me, and I can clearly understand what's what. That includes the little holes that are on these little ends of the uh, the propeller wings out there. Now, once I want to colorize all of them, then it assigns these colors, and again, with the crossover vertical faces off, then they will not appear as part of one or the other group. I can see my cavity side, I can see my core side, and that gives me a good indication as to whether or not this is going to be a moldable part the way it is. And if I'm happy with that, I can move on, and we'll progress then into thickness checks. There's a check wall thickness command here that once I, again, tell it to just calculate the body, and then it's going to legendize the colors with coloration. And the legend over here gives me a, an approximate idea of how much thickness I might have based on the calculation method here in the dialog window. There's a ray trace, which basically is face normal to opposing face, as opposed to this rolling ball, which is kind of a, a theoretical sphere put in between faces. As large as that sphere can get in between faces is the thickness that it reads out. So therefore, where this cyan and slightly greenish color is, I can look at the legend over here and see that it's eh, approaching maybe three-eighths of an inch thicker than a quarter of an inch. And if my plastic's not designed for that kind of thickness, I can either go back and uh, tell the designer we need to core out some of these areas here and thin it up, or maybe I use a different material, or we find other solutions. Moving on then, uh, that will save that information for thickness, uh, wall thickness information. Again, if that violates any criteria, requirements, or other checking, then I can configure the software to throw alerts up that might remind me that uh, we are violating some of our specs or design criteria. Now, there also are a couple of other commands for part valid, uh, validation. One is a run flow analysis, and then there's a display the actual results. That actually involves a, a third-party system, uh, Mol3D, and that uh, is a long process. I could probably do a demonstration for an hour just on that alone. So we want to move on and get into some of the things that uh, Mold Wizard does for you very, very quickly.